Sorry, I am wearing pants, but they're not very professional pants, so I keep No, 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 it's (laughs) totally fine. (laughs) Oh, uh, also, this is our third video, which means we can like officially go like Apple, iTunes, podcast or whatever they call it. Nice. Beautiful. Cool. Yeah. And we could probably like go standalone channel if you want to, if you want to go there. (laughs) I would. I'd be keen. I'd be keen to try yeah. that out. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. If, if you want. Since we're like going um, official, I guess we can do like try to figure out what we do for some kind of intro. And uh, somebody said on our comments, they didn't like where I stuck the computer voice of blank frame in there. I thought the computer voice was cute, but that, that's I'm going to use cool. it. I'm going to use it. <laughs> I'm going to see if anyone else will speak out against the computer voice. The show is about nothing. Blank frame. I'm sorry, person who did that. If you're a loyal viewer who just hates computer voices. <laughs> <laughs> That's valid. Hi, guys, and welcome back to an episode of Blank Frame. I am Yvonne, and this is... Jamie Maldonado. And we are going to be your hosts for today's podcast about everything film photography and about nothing at all. Especially the nothing at all part. I was just winging that one. <laughs> was that good? Was that good? That was cool. Yeah, I, I think that. that was great. I mean, yeah, if you feel like... Like edit out the little pauses because I think we've got some lag. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Then I don't know. It's good. We can we can riff yeah, on it. We we'll can have get some a little songs. Mu- yeah, music in the background. Yeah, I uh, I I definitely show my '90s upbringing when it comes to picking music. <laughs> I always just go for like classical in the background, but I have like a a hearing disorder, so I it, oh. I can't hear both music and talking at the same time. Oh okay. And so sometimes I get comments being like, "The music is way too loud. Or, the music is way too quiet." I'm like. <laughs> yeah I, I just put it in there for you guys i can't hear shit <laughs> I'm sorry, no but, yeah uh we can say that i think i i said shit on the first one so we got to keep it up because then we'll lose the ability to say it if we don't say it <laughs> you're right it'll be too yeah. startling okay well then yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can't hear shit <laughs> there you go perfect shit yeah i'll just just had to fit one more in there to fill the quota <laughs> yeah no that's good that's yeah good. yeah cool absolutely <laughs> um but yeah i, I um, get I no, have that. I, gonna... <laughs> I have the the hearing thing too. Like I, I can do music with background noise, okay. But it like let's say I'm in a restaurant and I'm talking to someone, and they or one of those restaurants that play loud music, it's over. It's I can't. I can't. Yeah. Hear. Same. Same. Kale. I'm yeah. like. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and drink my drink until I have to go. Yeah. I really can't. Yeah, I might... there's anything that's being said. No. Yeah. I'm the same. Oh yeah. Uh, I am useless in a loud restaurant. Oh, I just got somebody coming in the door. Uh, I'm sorry, I have customers still coming in. If no you don't put mind, pause, put pause. a minute. Yeah, okay, okay, cool. All right. All right. So, what are we All chatting? Right. What are we chatting about today? So, uh, uh, your uh, thoughts on Japan, I guess. Also, we could talk about that new Lamography 110 camera. Ooh, yeah. I actually have never shot 110, so I'd be super oh, interested wow. to chat about that. Cool. Technically, my first film camera was uh, a 110. It was one of those little keychain cameras, like. Uh, and it's almost smaller than a cartridge of film. Uh, Whoa. Yeah. Do so they it's... sell 110 film still? Lomography does. Yep. They probably, I my guess is they got Ferrani as old, some parts of their, like their 110 factory equipment. And uh, they still make it fresh. And their color 200 is actually really nice. And so is the black and white 200 or 100 and 400, I think. Oh my God. I yeah. maybe, uh Maybe try to get my hands on one of those. Because, yeah, I just oh, saw yeah. the news today. It's kind of exciting. Have you yeah. picked it up yet? Do you have one? I haven't. Uh, really? I, I'm probably going to oh. sell one because I. Uh, somebody told me, I don't even remember who it was, but they said if you pick up this one, Di- like Lomography Diana Picnic 35 millimeter cameras, and it does square format and and half frame. Uh, but if, if you pick that up, it'll sell really fast. I'm like, sure. And I bought it. I'm like, oh, why did I do that? I just like, that's going to be $75. I'm just going to be sitting on. But mm-hmm. I put it out not three hours later, someone bought it. Ah, oh my God. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. I've always wanted to shoot one of those. Yeah. Um, a lot of their products, like if I saw them in store, I would probably be tempted to buy them. But because it's, yeah. it's like the barrier of getting shipping and duties and imports and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that saves my, my wallet a little bit. But yeah, yeah I, I'm definitely yeah. going to. Like, I wish I had more credit line as a store. Like, I would probably get a few more of those. And I'm sure that's coming. I'm just like, I've had a storefront for a few months. <laughs> and then I've had a business technically for a year. So what else is in your storefront? I haven't, uh, I haven't seen um, pictures of it. Oh, I need to send you pictures. I have a display case full of point and shoots and old SLRs. Like, there's like a couple of good ones, like some AE ones and... um X and a Mondelta X700 and stuff like that. Got a Mamiya TLR on top of it. I would, 
if this camera were friendly to it, I'd walk you around on it, but I'll send you a little video walk around. That sounds um, cool. I maybe oh, yeah. maybe include one in the podcast just so people can see what's, uh, oh, yeah. what's going on in Texas. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, I need to do that on my channel anyway. Oh. Um, actually, maybe we should talk a little bit about some some new film stocks that are on the market Ooh. recently. Oh, yeah. they're not, I don't know if they're new, but um, have you heard of the flick film, the new flick film film? Oh yeah, um, the uh, the Aurora or whatever, and the yeah, other Aurora eight hundred. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I know exactly what film that is, and I don't know if I should it's say it. It's not still. The, the, the flick film guy basically said Kodak. It, I mean, like, he didn't say it was Kodak, but on an interview, he said a no major North American film manufacturer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the the major North American film manufacturer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, which would mean that it is the stuff likely that winds up in Kodak's 800 speed disposables which would be certain 800 speed films out there that are good uh by companies like yeah i'm not sure how much we're allowed to speculate yeah but i recently was um sent three rolls of the aurora 800 and i haven't tried any of it yet oh but i also haven't tried any of the other things that it could possibly be so oh, yeah. i am very excited um yeah. to explore this new territory of 800 Absolutely. iso color film if it's the uh, one the only I... 800 isos oh sorry Oh, no, 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 no. Which, I was yeah. just going to say, um, the only 800 ISO color films I've shot um, are Cinecil and then uh, a Portrait 800. Oh, wow. So if it's the one I'm thinking it is, it's a true 800, more true than Portrait 800, in my opinion, and really more true than Cinecil is an 800. Uh, so it is just mm -hmm. a very nice 800 speed film. And I'm extremely excited. They've been able to shave a couple of bucks off the price and especially for you i'm sure it's even more since it's canadian so. yeah they're like right next door there i think they're based oh, out of alberta amazing. um at some point i'm gonna hey guys i'm in alberta can i come by <laughs> so yeah there's the aurora 800 and there's the um psychedelic 400 uh, which is psychedelic street 400 Ooh, both okay. of which i think are pretty exciting uh yeah um, oh yeah I, I, they did they did announce that they bought street candy so yeah, yeah they bought street candy so they've re-released the street candy atm film so that's cool i shot one roll of that ever so is it good because i have a couple rolls cooking in my fridge right now uh yeah it's a uh, very gritty kind of but not like necessarily grainy but it's it, it, it definitely lives up to the name street i think so it would definitely look really good, I think, in kind of a gritty urban environment. Cool. That's all of the environments yeah. that I shoot in pretty much. So <laughs> yeah, I haven't had a chance to shoot much of the flick film, but recently I shot three rolls of the Electro 100. Um, oh, yeah. And I'm pleased to announce that all three rolls had over 40 frames on them. Wow. So that was great. <laughs> That was 142 That's... frames. And I just kept Whoa. shooting it. And I was like, is my camera broken? Like, has yeah, it been I, the film at all? <laughs> I did that on a Rolo Metropolis once. I'm like, wow, 45 frames. But it's because the leader didn't go in the spool. <laughs> God, and I was, I was just shooting it. I was like, oh, yeah. my God. Oh, no. <laughs> I had been shooting all day. Like, I walked around for like six hours taking photos. And then at the very end, I'm like, I'm at 42 frames. Like, something's oh, no. wrong. And so I put it in my bag. And I like opened it up in my bag. And I just like felt around. And I was like feels That's like film. it's on there like <laughs> yeah 43 frames on that one or 42 wow. 42 frames on that one um and That's then i amazing broke one of the frames by fucking feeling around with it and then oh, no. there's a bunch of white leaks <laughs> but they were cool it was cool lately yeah oh that's uh, good. but yeah that was really nice yeah i remember that okay yeah i wanted to do a whole video about the environmental impact of film photography at some point it could be a fun oh, yeah. one i have many many opinions about it especially when you think about digital waste let's see um what else? What has happened in the last few weeks in photography or film photography? I guess there's the new cameras, the new film that we talked about. Um, that this is, I think, this is where the film photography podcast world like runs into. What do we talk about? I was going to mention on the topic of slide film, just kind of going back to what oh, film yeah. photography is like in Japan. Oh, um, yeah. A lot of people were really excited to see in the pictures that I shared that there is a significant amount of slide film still mm. on the market there. Oh. I feel like here, like in North America, stores just don't really carry slide no. film. If they do, it might be like Ektar 100 for like $40. Yeah, that, um, Alaris. But, but I guess that's a thing I, I could speculate on because I have no inside connections to Kodak. But Alaris <laughs> is is a pain in the butt sometimes. And that's why you have like $30 Ektachrome and stuff like that. 
that makes sense. Yeah. Um, over in Japan, they do still have uh, Velvia and Provia that are new, um, what do you call it, expiration dates. Oh, yeah. And I saw, yeah, there would be like a big section and there'd be like, what is it? Like, I don't know much about the the papers, but there'd be like four by ten. Oh, wow. Uh, or four by five. Oh, yeah. Um, slide film as oh, well. Man. So people were I, excited to see that. That was still in production. Yeah. I love Velvia 100. If they would ever bring that back in America, that was my favorite slide film, probably. When did that go out? Uh, just a couple of years ago. They said it was because environmental issues, but really they probably just their freezer stock ran out and they didn't want to make new stuff. So I remember that. And, uh, I gotta, I gotta make a trip down to freestyle pretty quick. Oh yeah, I, uh, yeah. My, my fridge right now is looking a bit packed. I should probably start a retail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Although uh, hey, actually, let me go grab the Fuji oh, film that I got oh, for you in Japan. Yes, please. Um, and I'll show it off. Okay, one awesome. second. So, uh, gentlemen. We have a deal. Uh, okay, so cool. I got a bunch of stuff. You don't have to take all of it if you don't want to, but okay. these are all made in Japan. Ooh. Oh, two D films. So I, I posted on uh, Reddit with a bunch of pictures of the stores that I visited, and the number one question that I got was, "Did you see any Fuji film that was recent and had expiry dates of 2025 and later?" So here is expiry 2026 Fuji Ooh. film. Pretty sure all of these are 2026. Cool. So I think that. Pretty much confirms who's yeah. back in production. That Very is limited amounts. Fascinating. Um, yeah. <laughs> Every store yeah. that I visited did have Fuji film, except for one. Um, huh. The Instax film was in severely limited quality quantity. Oh wow! Pretty much nowhere had it in stock, which is That's weird. Shocking. Um, yeah. This stuff was in pretty abundant looking quality, but it was limited to one or two boxes per store huh. per person. Yeah, so I that... had to visit several stores. Huh. Get this plentiful. Oh, oh, that superior premium. That was my favorite 400 speed film. And uh, discovered that when Fuji started selling Superior, I or they they had changed the American Superior um, to that 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 version. So uh, the cheap American Superior was actually that film. I bought so much of it, and then they stopped making it. And then so to see that back though, even if it means I had to pay a little bit more to get it from Japan again. That is such nice stuff. It's it so wasn't good. crazy expensive. It wasn't crazy. I think, I think it comes down to like fourteen or fifteen dollars USD. Per it's box, worth which it. is more expensive yeah. than it was. Yeah. Um. But as far as like films yeah. go, I think that's pretty. I would thirty six for rolls. Ooh, I would shoot that as my main four hundred, and if they made it in one twenty, I would buy like truckfuls of it. Like a bulk roll. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lord. Yeah. I also got. Uh, Fuji Color 100. Oh That's yeah, cool. there I've was shot one that place once. That yeah, only had this. Never shot this myself. I've actually no. not really shot a lot of Fuji Color personally. Uh, I think yeah. I've shot Fuji Color 200 like one time. Knows it. Oh wow. Um, I did shoot a roll of this while I was there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can confirm. It's pretty nice. The color saturation yeah. was really rich. At first, like looking at the the little thumbnail printouts that they gave me, it oh, looked yeah. like. There was halation in it, huh. and I was like very suspicious of that. Oh yeah. Um, when I got the scans, I didn't really see much halation, so I think it was just like an artifact huh. of the thumbnails that I was looking at. Oh okay, interesting. Um, yeah, this looks pretty much like I would expect Fuji Superior yeah. to look. Um, probably not anything but yeah, true classic Fuji Superior. That's and then awesome. the last one is the uh, Fuji Superior Extra four hundred. Ooh, okay, yeah, that's um, the stuff you used to which... be able to get in America. So oh, yeah, the, yeah, and then they started selling that as the other premium as extra, but I doubt it's the same anymore. Because if they're bothering to make the extra box and just selling it in Japan, it's got to be the old Superior. That's really it fascinating. makes sense. Yeah, it but was that, easier to get this than it was to get this. Um, this one was usually like more. two or three boxes, and this person this was usually one box. Oh yeah, per person. Interesting. Um, yeah, I will. Uh, I yeah, will so see, those are the yeah. spoils. Cool. I will. I will be happy to buy a, a, a good lot of that. <laughs> it's all yours if you want it. Oh, okay. Um, cool. I also brought these ones, Ooh. which I wanted to show off. Oh yeah. Um. So in Japan, there is a competitor to Cinestill called Merix, which Ooh. my phone loves to autocorrect to Matrix. It is not Matrix. <laughs> it's Merix. Um. This is a Jap Japanese film repackaging company. Uh -huh. They have 400D, 800T, 200, 100. They have I think 
uh, 400 black and white. Um, I shot the 800T and the 400D mm -hmm. while I was there, and they were both Cine still, like just Kodak Vision yeah. uh, T, which huh. is cool. They looked great, and yeah. they are cheap. Like this was a oh, wow. uh, $20 roll for 36 exposures of 400D. Oh, wow. By Canadian standards, <laughs> that's very cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's always on my back because I'm like, Oh yeah, Porsche's thirty bucks a roll, and they're like, "No, it's only twenty-five. And I'm like, "No, <laughs> it's thirty three yeah. dollars per roll, which is way too much." Um, so anything under twenty, and I just like get really excited. Oh um, yeah. So here's the four hundred, eh, the four hundred black and white, which Ooh. I don't know. I but will... might be Japan Camera Hunter. Oh, okay, I wonder if if maybe. that's because you can shoot double X at four hundred, so maybe it could just be double X, but. I would I would be very curious to see what that that is. I would be curious too. I'm going to investigate this one because I have a roll of this in my um, camera at the moment. And oh, yeah, then the what? last one was <laughs> this one. Oh which, yeah. Sorry, I taped them all together because these are oh, no, friend fine. and I didn't want to lose them or accidentally shoot them. But um, Candido. So there's two different Candidos. There's a 200 and a 100. Cool. No idea what this is. It looks very Perfect. warm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I've I've seen no a little bit is. about those, but I don't know much about them. That is cool. It says designed in London, packaged in China. Oh, okay. Hmm. No idea then. Yeah, no, no, no clue. Um, but yeah, so those are the kind of interesting ones that I picked up. Yeah. There is also an interesting um, set of films that I noticed over there that I haven't Ooh. seen over here. Okay. And that is, there's typically like a, there, so there's three different companies that I saw that package this okay. and they have a blue version and a red version. So, oh, okay. It the Yashica or Yashica, um, oh yeah, Yashica Sapphire seventies and Ruby eighties or something. Huh. But there's other versions of that, like red blue. So there's one red tinted, one blue tinted. Huh. Um, yeah, the, I don't the, know what they would be. I don't know if it's the same people who sh sold that really awful digital camera branded as Yashica, or if this is another comp yet another company that bought the name Yashica. <laughs> it's it's so fascinating to see like zombie brands. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it definitely is because it was the only Yashica product that I saw anywhere. Um, huh. And it was just like these two random boxes of film, which are clearly repackaged because there was another brand that had them for like $40 a roll, um, the blue red pair of films. I can't remember what they're called. It's like yeah. Showa, maybe Showa camera. Oh, okay. But yeah, huh. we don't have like an equivalent to that like blue red pair over here. So, oh, well. no idea what it is. Yeah. Any speculation? Uh, I actually don't like, do they have like a, a country of origin? Do, what do the sprockets look like? The sprockets. That is a great question. Let me go and grab my box of it. Uh, okay. So I have the three, I have Merix, I have Ooh. Candido and I have Yashica here. Cool. These looks like this. Okay. It's got like kind of a greenish yellowish tint to it. I've actually not seen that color before. And the sprockets look um, uh, probably pretty squarish, not the oval cinema ones. They are rectangular, not oval. Yeah, that looks yeah that that looks like a photo one. Yeah, interesting. Let me see. It says, "Nope, no information about where it's made." Hmm. Oh, it's a sticker. Can I peel the sticker off? Ooh, I have to peel the sticker off. Is it one of those? Ooh. No, it's not a sticker. Just kidding. Okay. Nope. Yeah. Couldn't tell you. I have to do some sleuthing. Yeah. Yeah, some of these like, like yeah, that Yashika. I wonder if they buy from Innovus too. I wonder how many people Innovus are selling to. Somebody had mentioned that this might be um, Wolfen NC four hundred and five hundred. Yeah, as the red and the blue. I yeah. don't recognize Wolfen NC four hundred and five hundred as being like distinctly blue or red. So it might mm. just be like a marketing gimmick, and then they edit them. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the photos that I looked at of these all looked so blue that I was like, are these edited? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But we'll see. If it's um, the same I'm Yashica sure. that did the digital film on the digital camera, do you remember that? No, oh, I, I don't oh. actually remember that one. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. The digital audio film was like a paper shoot. So thing? what it was, oh, uh, it was, uh, you, uh, it's just your audio blip. So if it sounded like I was confused, but I got the, I got what you said. <laughs> uh, but it, they had this little point and shoot digital camera. And then, they had this little slot in it that you would put a little cartridge in and they said digital film and it was supposed to have settings on it or something. But in reality, it did nothing. It was just a little toy <laughs> and they ripped off a lot <laughs> of people. 
So that yeah, sucks. Was, that actually sounds like it'd be like fun to play around with. Like, yeah, it was fun in theory, but professionally, but yeah, but it was like a bad. It wasn't even phone camera quality. It was like boy digital camera quality with like a Yashica tag on it and this little empty spot where you put this pointless film cartridge into. (laughs) Yeah, it was it was a disaster. Yeah. Pretty lame for them to use the uh, iconic brand name that way, too. Yeah, I guess uh, we hadn't talked about the Mint Rolly 35. Speaking of iconic brand names being used by other companies. (laughs) What 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 the the mint autofocus camera? Did you hear about that? The thirty five millimeter point no, and shoot. Yeah. Okay, I'm mint was it. making a thirty five millimeter point and shoot modeled after the Rolly thirty five series, and uh, they actually teamed up with whoever owns Rolly now, and it's now the Rolly thirty five AF. Oh, oh my god! Wait. Yeah, it's probably going to be nice. Is mint it good? Have you good tried stuff. it? Huh? Have you tried it? No, it's no, out. it's not out yet. Uh, it'll be it'll be six hundred bucks, and I think it's going to come out sometime this year. Like a really high end point and shoot, but Mint does make good stuff. Bucks. It's just a little pricey. <laughs> yeah, it's a little pricey. <laughs> That's the one catch. But uh, if you want, looks like a nice frame, design, though. I'm just yeah. Some images of oh it. yeah, I have a Rolly thirty five uh, rangefinder, and it's kind of beat up. I you have to like p- stick a pencil eraser into it and re- manually reset. The counter on mine because somebody dropped it but the lens is beautiful it's a great camera yeah the counter's not important yeah You'll it'll count you once you once you reset it manually it counts fine but the resetting you have to do but i'll take it for like 25 dollars for oh. like a 300 hundred dollar camera yeah. oh my god not bad yeah not bad um, at all no i suck at zone focus so i've never been good with the other rolly 35s Oh yeah, I can't do it. I no. no. Every time I try zone focusing, I get at least half of my photos back very underwhelming. Yeah. Oh yeah, and yeah. I, I can look at something. I'm like, that's six foot six inches long, or this is like twenty inches, or whatever. But if you do distance, it's just nothing. It's a useless. No, I, I yeah, like <laughs> distance this way, totally distance yeah. this way, exactly, not. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just I don't know. Like it, it only works in one direction for me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe no, up, maybe up, but other than that, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, oh, um, oh no, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say, um, speaking of the thirty-five millimeter cameras, there were very few um options available, like retail-wise, mm. oh, wow. at the the camera stores that I looked at. Um, there's obviously like lots of vintage camera stores in Japan, particularly like Tokyo and Kyoto and Osaka had crazy vintage camera stores stacked with oh. vintage cameras and glass. But as for like firsthand retail, um, the there was like racks and racks and racks of Kodak, and mm. then racks and racks and racks of the other company that did a really good job making them look pretty, and that was mm. it. That oh was wow! It. I didn't see oh. any Harman. Um, didn't see any Lomography. Lomography was very expensive. The film, oh, wow. huh. and I didn't see any other Lomography products. Huh. I guess I wonder. I guess they don't have much distribution there or something, or maybe that was like one of the markets they didn't penetrate well because they took advantage of like collapsed markets and Japan's never fully collapsed. Maybe, maybe something like that. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like they, they were in every store. Yeah. Um, Like pretty much every store I went to, the only products I recognized were Harman Phoenix, uh, Kodak products and Lomography products. And then very occasionally Cinestill, but the Lomography would be like $40 a roll for like turquoise. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Also, I just yeah. realized I'm throwing branding on here uh, and it, it's like the worst coffee anyone can probably buy. Like <laughs> I should probably down. like I should probably get <laughs> like if they have like Timmy Horton sleeves or something like that, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> we'll, we'll or just a have little... like a little dark room sleeve. It's like a little little nod yeah. to your. Uh, oh, yeah. Your Canadian dark have, room project. Yeah, I do want to get coffee cups one day. That actually that's a good idea. <laughs> that would be I'll, cool. Uh, yeah, I'll do that with uh, a caffeinol workshop. That's a good idea. <laughs> oh, that was it. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So I'm looking at the the things here, the Lomography products prices. And yeah, the, the three roll combo pack with the Lomo uh, color negative, uh, Metropolis, and something else, yeah. um, $60, $61. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that gets a bit wild a bit fast. Yeah. Where's yeah. the really nice ones? There's, oh, there is one place that's carrying ilford okay so the, the nice ones are all yashica um, oh, okay they have like a thousand models 85 bucks of this 
35 millimeter camera. And oh, wow. uh, it comes in like every pattern imaginable. Whoa. And that was what I was seeing all over the wall. Oh, yeah. Was, okay. um, just variations of that. Yeah. I wonder if I guess they, they know the Yoshika, Yoshika brand is like real rec recognizable. And since so many of the other Japanese brands are still kind of in circulation, like Canon and Nikon, you can't do cheap things with that. But Yashika is still real recognizable. And it's like one of those like lapsed copyright names. Maybe they, yeah, they latched yeah. onto that for that market. Yeah, it looks like somebody's trying to resurrect that. Yeah. For sure. For sure. It looks like somebody's trying to resurrect that. That's um, interesting. As like a, a a mainstream brand. Yeah. You don't get them a lot over here, right? No. I don't see a lot no. of Yashika products in stores Definitely in North America at all, really. Yeah. yeah. And their reputation is pretty rough after that, that little digital film stunt. <laughs> <laughs> that's too bad i mean it sounds like a cool yeah. idea i'm sad to hear that it was yeah. so crappy yeah it, 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 it would have been better if it had gone like that reflex camera the that first like kickstarter slr attempt that they just really really were way too optimistic about <laughs> and they uh, they collapsed cool so um yeah uh, uh before we go i guess do you have any anything coming up this week that you want to promote or i guess you have a new video out today you can promote too Got my new video yeah i actually so i think by the time this is posted um i'll have a new video coming out called what is film photography like in japan so if you're interested by some of the things that we discussed in this video you can go and check out that video coming up on wednesday uh, march 13th i guess cool. and i'll be talking about everything that i saw in japan what's available what's not the lowdown, what camera stores look like, what you can buy, et cetera, et cetera. So stay tuned awesome. for that. Oh, yeah. Ferrania P33 is a video a film we didn't talk about, but maybe I'll release my Ferrania P30 medium format review now that P33 has come out. Sounds the good. one that has been delayed for like five months. But uh, yeah, and then uh, I'll just work in more on the darkroom. And I'm going to shoot photos in Abilene, Texas this weekend uh, with a, a pet a influencer, I guess, or a, a critter influencer. Her name's Catalia, and I've been friends with her for a while. And so we're going to do some just some fun photos, but also probably something with like goats or baby deer oh. or something like that. Oh, pretty. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, golden cool. hour sun, shining through the antlers of a deer. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, it, we can, I can replay the socials on the end if you want to keep doing that. So we don't yeah. have to repeat it every time. That uh, sounds and good. Cool. And I guess I'll see you in a week or so for another. In a week or so. Uh, yep, thanks awesome. for sitting down and thanks again for another great conversation. Oh yeah. Thanks you too. And have a great week, everyone. Bye guys. Bye. You can find me at Jamie M Photo. That's J A M I E M Photo. Uh, I'll actually have it if we have show notes or whatever. It'll be in there. It's a lot easier. Or uh, Piney Woods Darkroom is my darkroom. And I am Y Hanson Photography. That's Y as in like the letter Y. Um, H A N S O N underscore Photography. You can find me on many social media platforms under that handle. What has Mr. Greenberg captured here? The essence of a flower or the point of view of an aggressively average thinker? Dude, I'm right here. Class dismiss. Cool. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's do some awesome. thumbnail stuff so I can I can hold this up and be like. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> hold it like really close and I'll be like, it's back. It's back. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> Wait, let me get one with the expiry date. There we go. Oh, yeah. No, I should take advantage to do the... <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. And then I'll, like, highlight the expiry date or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. zoom it in, like, pixelated, like, 2026. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect.